So let me start with um, Mr. Akita. Mr. Akita, the, the floor is yours. I have asked all the panelists to, to speak about uh, six, seven minutes before having exchanges and uh, turning to the audience. Mr. Akita, the floor Hi. is yours. Hi, thank you very much for having me here today. I'm sorry I couldn't come to the conference venue. Uh, actually, when I was uh, invited, I got excited and I check all the information about Abu Dhabi uh, from uh, uh, culture, restaurant, and food, and so on, as well as conference agenda. So I hope I can uh, visit uh, Abu Dhabi in the future. So I will uh, finish my first remark in six minutes. So I just want to make uh, three brief points. First point is about the changing nature of US-China rivalry. Second point is the prospect of that rivalry. And thirdly, lastly, about, is about what we should do to win this competition. So first uh, point, changing nature of US-China rivalry. Uh, before the pandemic, I think that the rivalry was more or less about uh, competition over the high-tech and maritime security domain hegemony. But through this pandemic, now we have a very important new element to this rivalry. That is fierce competition over the political system. In short, uh, competition between Communist Party regime political system versus U.S. democratic system. So now uh, U.S. generally believe that Communist Party regime is part of responsible to this COVID situation in the U.S. or other country. And the U.S. believe that if Communist Party allows freedom of press or press freedom of uh, uh, expression, uh, maybe Beijing could have avoided uh, this situation and could contain the outbreak of the uh, infection in Wuhan at earlier stage. So U.S. perceived this situation as a problem of the political system. <laughs> and why, on the other hand, China believed that uh, U.S. current situation is largely due to the former Trump administration's way to handle the COVID. Beijing now expands the narrative that a communist party regime system is superior than US democratic system. So it seems to me that uh, now it is, uh, this rivalry is beyond high tech or maritime security, but also to do with the political system. Well, this is the first point. That's the second point. What is the prospect of this rivalry? I'm afraid to say, but I think that Western countries are in a less favorable position and Beijing is in a much better position now. Let's look at the economic front. China has, China signed mega FTA agreement with 15 Asian countries last year, last year. It is called RCEP. Now China also applied the participation to TPP. And we cannot uh, underestimate China's willingness to enter TPP. On the other hand, US does not have any alternative economic strategy. Uh, US is not maybe willing to come back to TPP. So this is economic competition. And also on the military front, again, we have to admit that China is in a more favorable position as of today. Uh, China's military now deploys about five times more submarine aircraft planes 
and also warships than US military deploys in the Indo-Pacific. And according to the projection of uh, US in the PECOM, uh, 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 this military balance of power will shift toward China's favor more in coming years. So second point is that we are not in a favorable position now vis-a-vis -vis China. So that leads to my last short point. What should we do to win this competition? Obviously, we nearly need to have better common in the Pacific strategy to push back. Uh, we have in each individual country or EU now have it, their own strategies, but we have to have common strategy. But this is very, very difficult because uh, risk tolerance to uh, counter China largely differs depending on each Asian countries. For example, Japan and Australia can uh, accept highest risk to counter China because we are the treaty ally of US and we are the under the security umbrella of US. But on the contrary, ASEAN country, uh, relatively small and largely rely on China economically, cannot afford to resent China. So uh, accommodating all these Asian like-minded country and to proceed in the Pacific strategy is very, very difficult. But I don't think it's impossible. My conclusion is this. If we were to be, we were the painter, let's say, maybe we should pursue Giorgio Sula, pointillism painter's approach, rather than portrait painter approach. That is, uh, on canvas, we uh, placed dots on the important spots with a like-minded country uh, and accumulate those dots with a hope, with an aim to evolve to be uh, <laughs> ambiguous in the Pacific strategy. So that's dots includes high tech or supply chain or consequential digital rulemaking. So this is the approach rather than a portrait painter approach to draw clear picture, strategic picture, and impose it to everybody. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Akita, for, for, this, for your points on the changing nature of the rivalry between uh, the US and China for, for the prospects. You argue that China is in a better position, so it will be certainly the, 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 the good way to, to start the discussion with uh, Renault, who may have another, another vision, and also for your, for your proposal at the end. So, Renault.